Diablo 4 is all about player choice. It takes all of the pillars of a Diablo game and just expands them with all of the new features that people really love and appreciate in modern games. Whoever you see yourself being, you can create in Diablo 4. It's important to include robust character customization because then I can play the fantasy that I want to play. It allows you to switch around your playstyle as well. Everything feels very powerful and fun. One of the really cool things about having an open world is your journey that you take throughout Diablo 4 is your own. There's no linear path that you have to follow. We've got almost 150 dungeons in the game. There's all kinds of surprises as you're exploring. Strongholds are an enemy territory that you need to reclaim. You might have a space that begins as a hostile area, but after you've cleared it out... The evil in this place has been cleansed. It now becomes a friendly town. Sometimes it's a new town, sometimes it's a new dungeon. There's a whole bunch of rewards that you get and you have a real impact on the world as a result. No, you can't leave us here. They might come back any moment. Local events are really cool little story segments that happen within the open world. You'll just be running through the world and then a local event will pop up and you can choose to participate in it or get a group together and just wail on these like giant world bosses. These are events that take a lot of people and you really have to work together. Being able to see all the players on your screen, collaborating, trying to take this big monster down, it's, it's epic. It's so easy to create a community. It makes Diablo more of a social experience. We've got fully enabled crossplay. If you have an Xbox and your buddy has a PC, you're gonna be able to group up where you could play couch co-op. Two people on a couch can sit there and have a great experience. We've created specific zones where players can engage in PvP. If you go there, you can start swinging away at people. But you're also opening yourself up to being swung at. If you're like really, really good, the game actually marks you as like a champion on the map. You basically become a loot pinata, and everyone wants to chase you down. The last story mission is really the beginning of a whole different part of the journey. Now you're set up for the end game, and that end game is rich with things to do that allow you to get more and more powerful. Whether it's new items or new dungeons or new paragon boards, every single time you come back to play Diablo 4, there's going to be new stuff for you to experience and it's something that we're gonna support for years to come. I'm really excited for folks to get their hands on Diablo 4. Just to see millions of people really enjoying the different options. Through the campaign. Local events. Couch co-op. End game. PvP, it almost doesn't end. And we are so close. We also uh, uh, added uh, damage mitigation to monsters in Diablo 4, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, uh, that's what I want to talk about. Um, so we used to not have a damage uh, mitigation of all monsters. So monsters used to not have armor. So um, however amount the damage player deals, that's however uh, amount of the damage the monster going to take. So it has the advantage, it's pretty straightforward, it's really easy to understand. Uh, but it also has a problem that is wherever we want to increase the monster's defense power, the only, only way we can do it is uh, through increasing the monster's hit point. Um, like we say, like we say, uh, from level 31, a monster from level 31 to, uh, to 32 
we want to increase the their defense power of the time to kill by 10 percent that means level 32 monster gonna have a 10 percent more uh hit point of life uh, than the level 31 monster if you do this from level 1 to level 100 and at the end it, it ends up i mean the uh a, a super big number, like a billion or even trillion. And for people, for player to be able to kill this monster in a reasonable time, the player needs to ha deal like billions of damage. Um, and in Diablo 4, we, we show this damage number as a floating combat text. We cannot hide it. And uh, so the, the, because the number is so big, so long, it covers a big chunk of the screen. Yeah, uh, it's hard to understand too. Like, yeah, how are you reading? You know, combat at Diablo is really fast. You want to be able to quickly understand how much damage you're doing. Yes. Um, and we're trying to keep the numbers throw up here, and maybe you can explain like what what players are uh, kind of experiencing, or like what they would experience when they're are going you, through. You brought a clip? No, I did. I got it. I found a clip. Found that clip. What's that? Um. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, the stronghold you're looking at here. Uh, this is called Hope's Light. Um. Uh, kind of uh, in the in the jagged uh, shores of northern Scots Glen, uh, there's this great lighthouse called Hope's Light, uh, and its flame has been extinguished. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, the, the the port town of Merwin uh, nearby is particularly affected. It's the only port town in all of Scots Glen. Uh, they consider this a uh, sacred place, and obviously the the sailors of these perilous waters they kind of rely on the lighthouse to navigate. Uh, so, your kind of high level objective is to just find a path through uh, to the lighthouse and figure out what happened. Um, and, you know, as the player, when you arrive there, uh, you notice the Drown have risen. Um, the Drown are this brand new monster family in Diablo 4. They're these super mysterious creatures that kind of shamble up uh, on the shores from the depths of the sea. Uh, and they drag these, like, bells and mysterious idols with them. Nobody really knows, like, who they are or what they want. Um, but one of the other things that we're super excited to kind of do with Strongholds is, is to try and showcase these monster families, kind of give you a glimpse into, uh, into what they're about. Yeah, because I know, like, um, uh, back during BlizzCon, we, we actually, uh, 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 BlizzCon 2019, when we revealed Diablo 4, we actually did showcase the Drown for the first time. And then since then, we actually, I know we had a quarterly update blog that talked a little bit about monster families, uh, where we even talked about, like, familiars, for instance, and so forth that, that were up there. But, like, yeah, this is um, kind of like the, the first, like, updated look at Ninja Gore seeing of the Drowned here in, the, in a, a stronghold, uh, which is really cool to see. Legendary. <laughs> yeah. I, I never even knew what it was because I was playing with the UI off. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, actually, that might be, uh, uh, you know, going back to kind of strongholds at the, at the, at the system level um, and, you know, kind of like why uh, you, the player, might care. Uh, so uh, strongholds, they provide you with a, a lot of really awesome rewards. Uh, obviously, you know, you slay a bunch of monsters, you kill a boss, you're going to get a bunch of uh, XP and loot. Uh, beyond that, uh, Strongholds also reward you with a high amount of Renown. Uh, renown is another new system uh, in uh, Diablo 4. Uh, and just to quickly summarize that, uh, Renown, uh, it rewards you with engaging with multiple various open world activities. You gain Renown uh, in each of the five regions of the game. And when you hit certain milestones of renown, uh, you'll get rewards. Uh, you'll get really cool stuff like uh, additional potion charges, skill points, even paragon points at the later milestones. Um, so yeah, but uh, beyond all this like strictly you know gold XP loot renown, beyond, beyond all this strictly character progression stuff, uh, uh, I mentioned before, uh, conquering a stronghold has a lasting impact on the world and unlocks a bunch of additional content. Uh, so. Um, when you've completed a stronghold, uh, and you know, in some cases you've kind of, uh, you know, uh, cleansed the evil as much as it can be uh, in, in, in a world like Sanctuary, uh, people feel safe enough to come back, uh, and so, um, you know, some, some strongholds will actually become towns uh, after, you know, uh, they'll have vendors, uh, you know, waypoints. Other uh, strongholds might unlock uh, a, short, a shortcut path to a different area, um, a waypoint, uh, side quests, uh, many strongholds actually unlock dungeons, so, uh, you know, if you are hunting for aspects in the Codex of Power, or you're engaging with the Whispers of the Dead, or Nightmare Dungeons and Game Systems, you're, you're probably really going to want to discover all these. That's awesome. So, yeah, like, just like the, the last string we had, we talked a little bit about Codex of Power, so, um, and, you know, obviously going through dungeons ends up uh, unlocking or finding new Codexes. Um, so yeah, actually complete, uh, completing strongholds uh, will unlock new dungeons that will let you get more codex 
uh, or more powers within your codex itself. So uh, it kind of like opens up more and more, as especially with with strongholds itself. That's yeah. that's awesome, and it, and the the fact that it's a lasting impact on the world uh, is, is pretty pretty crazy. It, can you see strongholds like on the map, like as you're kind of like traversing through sanctuary? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just so like like any other uh, area of the game, you know, it starts as kind of undiscovered space, and then once you've discovered it, they show up on the map. They have some iconography to let you know that hey, there's a cool piece of content for you to go do here. Um, nice. And then and players themselves will see tons of these all throughout uh, all of, like as sanctuary that they can actually. Uh, either maybe like do a little bit later or come back to and so forth in that side. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There, like I said, there's there's multiple strongholds in every region, and uh, one of the so strong strongholds actually have a like a minimum level. So you might actually uh, you know discover one that you're just under leveled for. There's nothing stopping you from trying to take it on, but you're probably gonna die unless you're playing hardcore. Then the background. Then you make a new character. Uh, does it die? Yeah, exactly. That that's when you question it a little bit. Yeah. So, and that's another question we get a lot is like, is hardcore going to be in Diablo 4? And yes, it will be. Uh, so that's when you would question the idea of wanting to try to conquer a stronghold at a lower level. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, with the and and a lot again, this is just a a brand new feature for for Diablo 4 in itself. So it actually allows you to essentially just uh, continue to add additional content to the game and change the world completely because the fact that you can actually get new waypoints or uh, you know a whole new town that you can actually interact with with new you know vendors and so forth from that side is also just uh, completely like game changing from that end. yeah absolutely and a lot of the new content that you unlock uh, it is also kind of like part of the renown system so you complete a stronghold and you get uh, you know side quests and dungeons and all these things also feed into the renown system uh, so yeah there's a lot of cool stuff uh kind of completing a stronghold is kind of like only half of half of the feature right yeah. and the other half is all the additional stuff that gets unlocked afterwards that's very cool yeah strongholds is uh uh sounding awesome i i know like myself i i mean i played the <laughs> people we will be able to play it here really soon <laughs> but the perks I'm working at. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> we played the game. We yeah. played the game. The perks I'm working at Blizzard. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it, it most definitely is a cool feature. And I, I you know, had tr Strongholds completely changed like the whole entire map. And just having like even a waypoint closer to wherever you need to go for a dungeon is also really great to have. So, um, of course, uh, and art provided here, this footage here of uh, a barbarian kind of going through. I know this barbarian has got like some, some, legendary type of gear and like some unique skills and so forth that are like kind of modified ba based off the gear so I'm trying to sh show off a little bit of uh, a higher level barbarian for people um, um because the barb is just a ton of fun to play yeah super fun cool well i know that um we kind of went over a little bit about armor systems and uh the the strongholds themselves we do uh a lot of the feedback from the last stream is like you know they people were hoping that we uh spend a little bit more time on q a
heavens. I assure you, Father, the heavens didn't send me. to haunt me, old friend. It always starts with a journey to a distant land. There I find a city in flames. Streets choked with corpses. Unthinkable destruction. I witness senseless slaughter. Brother against brother. Pure hatred. And then, Executions, agony, suffering surrounded me until my turn comes. They burn my eyes, break my bones. I awaken in terror. There's no one left to stand against them. It's the battleground for the souls of humanity. And there'll always be something new in every area, like hordes of enemies, safe haven towns, resources to gather, events, quests, and more. Darker style, it's very macabre. Boy, to create for us. How would they show their world? What kinds of art would they use to describe the world? There's Kajistan, which is the sort of desert. It's amazing with its Skaz Glen, which is inspired by Scotland. Fractured Peaks is inspired by the Carpathian Mountains. It's sort of our mountainous desert region. And Hauzar is the swampy region of the south. Whether you're on a mount or on foot, it's a joy to go from one region to the next. Also, the region transitions are really beautiful and stunning to see. If you walk from Fracture Peaks into Hauzar, you'll cross all of these waterfalls caused by snowmelt. So you can actually see the snow melting in Fractured Peaks of a large basin that fills Hauzar with all of the swamp water. 
But we have all the different environments in the overworld and we try to make sure that we have dungeons that are flooded and there's like moss everywhere. It very much fits in with ex-Gosglan environment. Dungeons filled with sand. All the dungeons are particularly placed to make sure that they feel like this is a thing that could be in this part of the world. It fits here, it belongs here. Create a combat experience. A lot of times there'll be brutes and swarmers, melee or casters, and that's the term that we use to sum up the vampires or the drowned or the undead. Synchronized together, they bolster each other and improve how they work on the battlefield so that every time you fight a pack... We did a really good job of making these different versions of them that have adapted to their environment. There's snowy goatmen and fractured peaks in some of the colder areas versus lightning goatmen around dry steps and kind of the more arid areas. How is our has a lot of poison spiders? We've seen snake men in Diablo before, but of multiple snake heads, even human body parts. We have skeletons, we have undead, we have ghosts. Game. Spiders have been around in Diablo forever, but the spider... It's a giant spider that attaches to a corpse and then puppets it at you, and when you kill it, it explodes with tons of baby spiders, and I feel slightly guilty about... Life, deer, snakes, bugs, dogs. You can pet the dogs, by the way. So many people ask to pet the dog. <laughs> It was actually a lot of hard work to figure out how to pet that dang dog. You might have key dungeons to do. There could be bounties to pick up. You might encounter a world boss. You might encounter... We have much longer, sort of narrative-heavy side quests. You're always doing the same thing. The pacing is always... One of the things that I really loved about our announcement was the By Three They Come cinematic. I was able to build a quest where you actually get to go to those places. You get to go to the town. You get to go inside the chapel and I work with some incredible dungeon designers to build the dungeon from the cinematic. You're gonna to get to go across the bridge that you saw to the actual room where Lilith was summoned. I don't want to spoil too much, but I'm... Sometimes it's kind of nice to just walk places because that's a fence. You might find a demonic altar that you need to then defeat for all of their loot. You might find a ghost child who's trying to find the remains of their parents. We have strongholds, which are a sort of large, gen, and those stay unlocked permanently once you've beaten back the darkness. We did a lot of figuring out the balance between like how much space do we need versus how much space do we need to make them look cool. My favorite is this one. It's got these teleporters, and these teleporters act their dungeons, so you'll end up in a cave, a crypt, or one of the ancients. And every time you go in, it's designed to change. And there's dozens of villages. Hubs, they're, they're havens, they're places where you can find other players. They're good places to do all of your usual inventory management. Each region has its main city that you can get lots of side quests and lots of activities. We've really crafted. You can seamlessly explore with no loading in between zones, which is something brand new. It's a very... What I love about it is that you can go in a direction and you might be searching for a particular quest or an item and you'll come across a stronghold that you haven't explored before. You'll come across dungeons that have legendary affixes where you might discover a side quest. that you, There's any number of things that can happen along the road to your destination and that's what I love about having this fast space. It's been created to feel full of things to encounter, full of secrets to discover, full of characters to interact with, full of stories to find. We have these altars to Lilith that if you can fire, we also have these massive world bosses that are so big the camera actually has to pull out even further. And you're gonna have an opportunity to fight these bosses with your friends or with strangers to take down these huge world bosses. And the team has done just an incredible job making Sanctuary a world.